Lemon Amiga present. A play giant video review. Sit back and enjoy the show. Hello everybody, welcome to another Lemon Amiga player guide and review. This week we'll be checking out Apprentice, developed by Rainbow Arts and published by them in 1990. See the developers of this game, it was designed by TV Rap and Axel Helwig, and the code was by Axel and the graphics were by TV, and the music of course was Chris Hulesbeck. Rainbow Arts were famous for Factor 5, of course, but this isn't Factor 5, and this was requested a long time ago by a fan of the show, so finally we are getting around to it. This will be a review, or at least a play, of the early levels of this game. So, without further ado, let's press that fire button, and if we press the tab key, we can also enter a code as well. And I'm not sure of any of the codes, although they are on that Lemon Amiga website. In Apprentice, we play as a wizard's apprentice, and it's our job to find the exit to the level, and along the way we can gain some score, you can see, by collecting fruit and also destroying the enemies on that level. We can dispatch them in different ways. If the block you can see on the floor is on the floor, we can kick it into some enemies, and if they can't jump, it means that they'll die. And you can see another token here. I'm not quite sure what that does. I think that gives us some extra health. And the health is actually the guy you can see in the bottom corner, a bit like Doom, and I think once that depletes then that's a life over. You can see at the very bottom of the screen we have a readout panel, we're on world 1 at the moment, out of 37 worlds or levels in this game. Some of the enemies will also kick those blocks back towards us, and those spinning witches are definitely one of them. And yes, we find another shop. Let's see what we have in here, what have we got? Well, we've got six credits at the moment, six money. That's enough to buy some extra health, but not much else. So the shop just introducing us to that factor on that very first level. So if you're aiming for a mouse, you have to make sure that you aim on target. And if we're holding that block and press fire button, that will then throw it. And for this section, I think you're supposed to, well, you can build a bridge so that you don't have to jump across. And some of these blocks will contain bonus coins. You can see the coins piling up in the bottom and mistime that. You can also see a key there. and. That died straight away. Unfortunately, those brooms will also kick a block back towards us, and so you'll have to make sure that you aim on target for the brooms as well. And lobbing them in that direction should get rid of them first time. That's the exit. Now it's just a simple matter of collecting the key, and the key should open up the exit. There you go, there's some more score there. And you can see on the instrument panel we currently have two lives from the three that we started with. And this is the very first level, don't forget. And some more coins and some more health.
we find a mushroom, and the mushrooms again can jump over the blocks. Luckily, we can simply throw a block into a mushroom and it should die, but you'll have to watch for that bouncing around the screen. So it introduces us to a few enemies, and some of them have to be hit dead on or kicked towards, otherwise they'll sail straight over the top. And it introduces us to a new type of puzzle with every level. You can see on these early levels it reminds us of a forest and it reminds me of all those forest type games, rough and tumble and that kind of thing and the graphics are just adequate enough to flesh that out. We also have some spiders and those spiders can be killed in the same way and we also find a mysterious chest, which we shall discover a bit later on. Let's kill a few more enemies first of all before we investigate that chest. And you can see the mice jumping all over the boxes. Well, it didn't jump over that one luckily. And it looks like the mice can't jump over the boxes, but definitely the mushrooms can. So that's the enemies cleared out from this bottom section of the level. Just another leap of faith to go, so that means we can return back to that chest. And if we explore this chest and get the coins out of it, we'll also find a special token. And that doesn't give us any indication that we have that token, but if we press the space bar, that will give us a mini-me, and the mini-me will find a switch on the floor, and that will operate something that will give us, I think, an extra life if we go all the way back to the start of the level. And so mini-me will definitely come in handy on some of these levels, and it's one of the quirks and characteristics and unique features of this particular game. We found an information booth. Let's use the switch in the cave to create doors. That's correct. But I'm not going to go all the way back to the start of the level, even though we could do with that extra life at this point. Let's just make our way through to the exit, hopefully. And leaps of faith in this game aren't appreciated, but you can make it and you can just about destroy things if you are lucky. And if you aren't lucky, then you'll just have to aim on target. great to hear that the music changes periodically and the music is definitely one of the great parts about this game. It was released for just 19 99 back in the day, which is really good value because this gives us some good graphics. Don't forget in 1990 it was the dawn of good graphics and there's nothing wrong with these trees, nothing wrong with the animals which are actually moving. So we do get that hidden object reveal, some blocks. So just like the Blues Brothers, we'll have to lob them towards the enemies just like Titus the Fox. We'll have to pick them up and chuck them and that's yet again another unique aspect of the game, lobbing boxes about and maybe this took inspiration from the Mario games, I'm not quite sure, but you can see if we can't quite make that jump we can always throw a block down, that will float, that's good physics and that means that it saves us getting killed. TV rap is and he apparently designed this and created most of the graphics and the graphics are well done and I couldn't find any other games that he created graphics for so this is 
Rainbow Arts, it looks like 16 colours on the screen, but those 16 colours have been used to good effect. Let's check out that shop again, let's see if it delivers any more, yes a balloon, a feather or a bomb we can buy, so let's check that out, we can buy the bombs and yes it gives us one bomb you can see in the bottom, we can also pick up springy shoes which will increase our jump and also a feather which will mean that we can float down to the ground and I think once we have the feather that stays with us I'm not quite sure but that means that we can float down and hopefully we can float down from any high drop in this game and not get killed because there's no full damage the only damage that we'll take is if we collide with the enemies and it's not an instant death that will just wipe out some of that energy so it's great that it gives us energy but look at that time limit really ticking down now it gives us some free bombs as well and I think if you hold down that fire button that will activate the bombs so just like Dino Blaster we'll have to use the bombs to blow things up to time those and trigger those off and it's quite fun to do that if you haven't got a block you can simply drop a bomb having any luck whatsoever doing that and I think I'm trying to save those bombs for it later on so let's get rid of the witch the easy way and that should mean look at that we can even stack blocks on top of each other and I think there is yet again another bonus area down there do I really want to take a leap of faith well no in this particular case let's move on with those two measly lives onto the next level this is level 4 and I won't be getting anywhere near the 37 levels of this game I've never actually got off maybe level 8 and that's as far as we're going to get on this particular playthrough Heavy load can break beams and I have no idea what that means, it gives us some cryptic clues at this stage and only just surviving those enemies, maybe we need the feather at this point so that we don't take so much of a drop when we die and fall, look at that, we can even kill the birds with those blocks, that's very handy to know, so we can climb on vines as well and so this little game, this little kind of a mid price game, I won't say budget for a 20 quid note but it is a mid price game, definitely has some character although you can't look down and sometimes it's a gamble with the falls, do you jump off these things and risk going into water and dying and you can judge those gaps and judge the jumping and the firing of that thing then hopefully you stand half a chance we have revealed a switch and again hidden switches reminded me of a Mario game and those give us stuff and you can't put bombs on top of collectibles but we can put them by the side of enemies and they will automatically blow up so that's a good thing some of them blow up on contact and so the game starts off pretty easy at this point nothing's really taxing us and just like the Blues Brothers we can stack boxes and preserve them and use them a bit later on and that's the leaf uncovered which gives us slightly 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 less fall in speed so hopefully we've picked up that key let's rush again towards the exit and I've no idea what happens when we run out of time maybe we'll simply lose a life
By the time we get to World 5, it gives us the first of our puzzles, and we can jump up here and use the bombs if we want to do that, or we can try to get there with a box. And trying to get there with a box requires pixel perfect jumping, which is of course the staple of these types of platform games. You don't really expect it, but there is an easy way to do this. Well, one way to do it is to throw the box and then you don't have that dead weight. But you'll still have to jump on the absolute pixel, otherwise it won't get across that gap. And I think there is also inertia, so if you're running at the same time as jumping, you should be able to jump maybe a little bit further. But on this stage, there are actually two boxes that we can use, so we don't have to use just the one box. But I don't have to do that, so I'm trying to risk it. I'm trying to just use the one box so I can save the other one for a pool that I'll need to cross a bit later. So it is giving us those coins and those bonus items. I'm not sure how many coins I've managed to collect, but giving us those free bombs really helps as well. So hopefully we can collect these boxes and I think I'm just, well, I can collect that in midair. That's a great feature. So now we can use one of these as an island, hopefully, save us getting killed on this block because that drops into the water. If we happen to be standing on that block, when it falls down, we'll get killed. And I found that out the hard way. So just a small matter of time in this, and you can bang your head on the ceiling if you don't time that correctly. And what does this reveal? Well, of course, it reveals another ledge. And where there's another ledge, there's also a hidden switch. So let's see if we can find it. gives us another life finally so we're back up to the three lives now that we started with and if I'm not careful here I'm going to die so it's best waiting for that thing to start falling down and hopefully on its way back up again and stand on that block otherwise you'll die and it's learning those tricks and tips which really saves lives in this game because it's not the enemies it's simply bumbling into that danger and timing has to be observed, waiting around, of course you don't want to. Well, I was very lucky, I almost died. You don't want to drop blocks prematurely. You want to get them on target, otherwise you'll be defenseless and you can't jump on top of anything. Otherwise, well, you can see bridges can collapse, but enemies certainly won't die. This is not Turrican. Only thing you can do is jump over them. Now, having found a block, I don't want to waste it on those enemies, and I'm being careful of bumping my head on this roof, which is going to be pretty difficult. And luckily, the broom has just flipped that back, but once it's in the water, we can't collect it again, so that's just enough to get through this level. can't reach that block and we didn't carry one across either which we could have done but we didn't so that means that yet another bonus item is no longer available Sometimes you can back yourself into a corner and it makes it hard work on ourselves but those boxes are our lifelines so as long as we have them we stand a chance and then this section gives us an exit and then we can clean up those enemies, collect the bonuses and then exit this level. And it would be a good idea if it showed us when we've collected the key, I'm not quite sure whether it does that or not. And so let's dispatch the last few enemies, hopefully, and kick that across. And I think there is another extra hidden switch on here, there you go, that gives us the energy back if we lost the energy. And so finding all those hidden switches yet again is another one of those turrican things that you'll need to find, those hidden caches.
Apprentice was due to be released on the Commodore 64 and the ZX Spectrum, but those versions were never released. Surprisingly, there is a version of Apprentice on the Amstrad computer, which is a little bit mind-blowing, so if you want to play the Amstrad version, that's fine, otherwise you can always play the Atari ST version, which is practically identical, although it doesn't have the music. Just picked up another mini me token and that helps us hopefully climb to all those areas and if he takes some damage that's not too bad we can see we can't collect the coins in mini me form we can only trip switches in mini me form which means we've wasted it and we can't collect these coins which is pretty mysterious given the fact that we're supposed to do that so I'm not quite sure, maybe if we get hit then that removes that possibility. But you can see we're much too tall to get through all those gaps. So somehow or other he's supposed to use that. And maybe I ran into the spider and got poisoned, I'm not quite sure. But the objective of the level is to just get that key. So if you're speed running these levels you can simply rush straight to the key, grab it and then exit. That means these levels can be done pretty quickly. Let's see what's inside that chest. It's been some time since I played this. Maybe it's another token. Kick those coins out of it. Kick them, kick them out. And if you press it one too many times, you'll simply be losing a bomb. So that's not too good. But we can climb steps with boxes, which is a good thing. And I've no idea where the key is at this point. So let's hang on to those precious lives and check out all of the corners. It's plain to see that I have absolutely no idea what I'm doing on this particular level and that really doesn't help I'm trying to get that right but yet again a bomb comes to our aid and that's something so maybe he's supposed to use the mini me bit in this section I'm not quite sure and without a box yet again I'm defenseless and there's no room to jump either and there's no way I can get that box again so all I can do just like Shadow of the Beast is observe that tricky timing and jump over these things to hopefully preserve that health. I can't get anywhere in this level whatsoever so obviously this is just a bonus section Let's leave, if we can leave this section, I have no idea even if this is possible and sometimes this game giving us those dead ends at this point so you can't always be guaranteed anything and look at that, we need all oh, amazing miracle of miracles to manage to get through it so hopefully now this last section will have the key in it and I'm taking that on good faith because I don't want to jump down here knowing that it's going to be instant death so those instant death scenarios which we find on many of those platform games reoccurring and it would be handy if this guy could buy himself a life belt or a life preserver or even a floating buoy or something so that we could stay afloat without worrying about taking leaps of faith There are checkpoints, and it's a great thing that there are, and that saves you going all the way back to the start. Anything that you have killed will stay killed, which is also a good thing, and I think any items that you've collected as well. But doing a round robin and trying to get these spiders isn't easy, and you'll bang your head on the ceiling if you try to get onto this platform. So let's try not to do that. Um, I think there is the key, 
so it's going to be quite difficult to lob that thing down, we can't throw it down, we'll have to fall down and then throw it against the enemy, if we try to throw it from here, well it would have worked, so let's see if we can turn that into reality, let's see if we can do it, and yet again, miracle of miracles, we failed to do that, but we can now get the key, and we can now also get ourselves an extra bomb, which we can blow this thing up with, but it takes more than one shot. Takes two shots, so wow, We're struggling now in this game. We've got one crummy life left. We've got the key, we've got the exit. Let's not risk it again with those leaps of faith. And those things probably give us some extra lives like Lionheart, so it's definitely worth checking those out. And look at this, we've found ourselves another scenario. This is level seven, so we're now heading towards the castle area. And with the castle, we get some new tiles and a similar kind of level layout. Do we risk that jump into instant death? Well, yes, we can do that. And it even gives us some arrows showing us where we need to go. And look at that, King Mushroom, or whatever that is, is wandering around, reminding us of Alice in Wonderland. So you're gonna have to really be on your toes at this point. Luckily those boxes do not disappear or get destroyed. There are infinite boxes. So hopefully we can throw it in there. Does that give us an extra life in here? Let's check this out. What's this gonna do? And it doesn't seem to, it seems to be a woman telling us that we need a, a ring of some kind, there it is above us. Do we bother actually going for that ring on this playthrough? Well, if I'm not absolutely careful, unfortunately I'm going to bang my head on the roof and fall and die. That's definitely one of those horrible things, and look at that! It goes straight through, so there are bugs in this game. We cannot save yourself from dying, and that means, yet again, we're going to have to brave it, get through this section, there are no more boxes we can use, and that's unbelievable, let's try this top way, let's see if we can uncover something, there is a door up there, and do I risk it with that mushroom about to jump on our heads, I'm not quite sure, and it looks like we can't go that way because the arrows are pointing the other direction, so it's a one way street, that means that it's all or nothing, it's death or glory, so let's reach out for that death, and let's see if we can get that glory. Unfortunately, it means we're going to have to rush through the enemy, take some hit damage, and that's one of the drawbacks on this game, you'll have to learn how to do that, and then hopefully we can find some extra health somewhere else. So it is possible, if you know these levels, to get through them pretty safely and easily, although it does take some time to get through them the safe way, maybe even 10 minutes per level, and going back and picking up these boxes and things like that really does add to this playtime. And if you want to play this all the way through, you can probably give yourself maybe two hours to play this, because it really is long and it really does take a long time to get through all those levels. There are passwords, but I've never actually seen a password in the game. Maybe it's because I haven't even got that far. Luckily, we've now got a box, and if we use lateral thinking, we can put this box down and kill that thing, but how do we now escape? And that would seem like we've now killed ourselves in this spot because we can't pick up a box, but what we can do is press that space bar and give ourselves mini-me. Let's see what he can do. Can he kick these things? Can he punch them? Well, I can, and that just means by luck or judgement, we can well, actually not pick that one up, but if we pull the second box and kick it against the first box, that will move that out of the way, and that means that we can drop down that gap. And that's a difficult puzzle, and you might be stuck on this puzzle for light years until you work out how you're supposed to do that. It's not easy, it's not obvious, and you can take some damage trying to pull your hair out, trying to solve these puzzles, but eventually it is possible and eventually I should work that out, 
kick it and that means that we now have access to that tunnel so we can kick the other box along and that means that we can now hopefully escape this level. That's the ring that we're supposed to collect and there's a one-way street all the way over to that and I'm not quite sure whether I should be doing that or not. Hopefully this exit is looking pretty tempting at the moment so it's a gamble and yet again I can't remember whether I found that key. Probably not knowing this game. So we found the castle battlements and check it out this is actually a shop. What do we actually need? Well the health at this point and lives. Can we afford it? Yes, we can extra life at this point. And can we get the health as well? Is it worth doing that? Well, probably yes. But we don't have enough for the balloon. And the balloon is pretty useless because if we get stuck in these tunnels, we won't be able to use the balloon to get out. So again, like the Blues Brothers, we can float around with a balloon. And that's another part of this game. I definitely used to have this back in the day, in fact I think it's probably the first of the second game that I ever saw on the Amiga. I saw Lemmings and I saw this and I saw FA18 Interceptor, not necessarily in that order and definitely I remember this because I had a C64 and this blew me away with its 16 colour palette which was amazing. I couldn't get over the fact that the colours were so rich on this machine. No more pastel shades, we actually got rich, solid cartoon colours. We got solid cartoon gameplay. We got this amazing smooth scrolling. We got this amazing music, which was better than the SID chip, which is no mean feat. And we also got all these arcade quality graphics. So they could have converted many of the arcade games onto the Amiga, they didn't. Most of the arcade games that they converted were rubbish. But in 1990 this was the dawn of the great games and the colourful games and the... Well this doesn't have parallax but it's certainly got style, it's certainly got culture, although it's a bit too long for me. I could have done with passwords every 10 levels and that would have helped. Maybe there are, I'm not quite sure. But I'm only going to get to level 8 on this playthrough, that's not particularly great. And so let's risk it all, grab that key, and because we've got the feathers, or the leaf, it means we can float down back to that exit. So I do have respect for this game, I do have fond memories of this music and these graphics and this playability. I wish there was more going on, I wish there was a turret in the game, we could just shoot the enemies with magic spells. And so, if you like these types of puzzlers, this is definitely one to check out. It's got some infuriances and some annoyances and some hidden switches that you're going to have to find later on. And you're going to have to know where they are. But if you don't, then you can have to play these levels over and over until you get far. And then hopefully once you find the password, you won't have to play them from scratch. I try to negotiate these ridiculous puzzles, we'll go through those scores. The lowest score came from Amiga Action, who only awarded this 67%. Ace gave this 68%. Data Magazine gave this 70 Amiga Joker even gave this 72%. The current Lemon Amiga score is 72%. Zap 64 Amiga also gave this 79%. Your Amiga awarded Apprentice 80%. Joystick gave it 82. Generation 4 gave it 90. And so the highest score in this case goes to the Games Machine, who awarded Apprentice another 90%, which brings the average score up to 7.7, .7, which gives this.
7.5 out of 10. At this point we're struggling to get through the castle and after this we'll go through into the ice worlds and then also the hell realms and it will be some degree of hell trying to get through the game a bit later on but I've never actually seen that far. All the levels are pretty similar and if you look at the whole maps they don't really change much in size just bit more complexity and now you can see doors that we have to go through it means that we're gonna have to find our way th through teleports and you can see spikes some of those spikes can be got rid of by triggering switches so you're gonna have to be extra careful now with it introducing spikes to us which I think only robs away energy probably give this game a high score but only maybe 7 out of 10 I don't think it's got much replay value compared to something like well lollipop I've been playing recently and that's a much well linear level than these which requires less padding around and lollipop was a similar graphically enhanced budget game that many people have never even heard of and you can see we need mini me again for this section i haven't got that so we can't and we can't blow those things up either so it would have been handy if it told us the key that we're supposed to press for the passwords i.e the tab key on the title screen and it would be handy if we didn't box ourselves into oblivion and make sure that unfortunately we can't complete some of these levels through our own blundering and our own trial and error it is possible to do that but in this particular case i'm going to fall down a leap of faith which if i'd gone to the left and found a switch that leap of faith would have disappeared but i didn't i pulled to the right and i got killed so that's as far as i've probably got with this game and i could probably get further with some practice look at that there's a cup there so hidden treasures being released at this point and trying to use those to try and get out have i got mini me back let's try it yes we have and we're not flashing so it means we can collect these fruits so that means that we can collect the exit key so there are little things and little touches that are actually unique to this game one of them being this guy and that isn't in every single game that you've ever seen in fact very rarely do you get to go around as a mini version of yourself so i do have fond memories but it's not immaculate it does have some great things going for it and sometimes you can be very lucky and it can be very fun to avoid those enemies but at the same time it's not absolutely perfect sometimes it ranks up there with modern public domain games that use games creators to make these types of games but don't forget back in the day in 88 we got loads of ST conversions and I think this is an ST conversion so this is at least better than some of them even though I think it came with the usual NTSC compatible screen mode which means we only got to see this in two thirds of the screen area on a PAL machine even though this was I think a PAL game and so running now into that leap of faith we're now about to get killed so let's just do that and so if you are a master of these types of platformers you probably romp through this absolutely no problem and it seems to be less infuriating than venus the flytrap that we saw because there are less dead ends involved but how do you get that chalice well you're supposed to find a switch probably and that reveals the hidden platforms so there are some crazy things about this game that make it quite fun but you're gonna have to carve out quite some time if you want to play it it's not instant action like super frog or turrican and so you can't just pile in there and if you didn't know about that switch it means that you 
blindly padding around in the dark, feeling your way through it, and it's those things which can make the game feel unfair. I'm playing this on the WHD load at the moment, which has appeared to have crashed. Look at that, we can climb on those battlements! So maybe with the blocks on top of here we could have collected the Holy Grail and saved our father from a gunshot wound. No idea, but at this point we can't collect the Holy Grail. Thank you once again for looking at this review and hopefully it's encouraged you if you've never seen this game before to check it out and maybe do a lot better than I am bumbling around trying to play it after all of these years. So let's see if we can collect that. That's collected, so now just the Ark of the Covenant still to go. And now all that we need to do, hopefully, is to find our way out of this death trap and get ourselves back to the title page again. Thank you very much and I'll see you in the next one sometime soon. Thank you.